Here's a fun beginner fall painting. A lot of you said you liked pumpkins, so we're gonna do a pumpkin field. Taking a mop brush with light blue and white, do back and forth strokes on your canvas, and then take a light brown and some orange together and do back and forth strokes all the way down to the bottom. I'm using 12 by 12 stretch canvas today. Dry this background and take a size eight round brush. We're going to do some mountains. Just using the blue from the sky, no white with it. Do your mountain peak. You can design it however you want. See how I'm not doing a perfectly smooth line, but it dips down in the middle and back up on the sides. And then I'm filling it in down to where the ground meets. You can even straighten up the base. Now taking the same round brush, take a dark brown and do a line across the bottom. We're gonna plant some trees. Now see this dark green? I'm going to let you in on a trick. I actually mix my dark green with black. See, my dark green is actually Christmas green from Apple Barrel. It's slightly lighter than I like it to. So when I have a black bottle get pretty low, I fill it up with some of this green and shake it and that gives me a really nice green like this. I know it looks black, but it's really good for natural paintings. Now take a fine sea sponge. I'm going to dip into that dark green. And on that brown line that we did at the base of the mountains, I'm going to bounce in some trees. You don't want a lot of paint on your sponge, but very lightly tap and do this all the way across the brown line, not going above the mountain line. You can always make your mountains taller. So do them all different heights going into the brown a little bit. Try not to go under the brown line, but it's okay if it's going into it a little bit. And then I'm going to take the same sponge and dip into some orange. Now I'm not going to really make the trees any taller, but I am bouncing in a little bit of orange. You know how in the fall when leaves change, they change towards the tops. So it's almost like icing, bright pops of color. And then I'm going to take a golden yellow. This is not regular yellow. It's actually called King's Gold, but just a dark golden yellow. I'm going to do the same thing, bounce in different areas. Don't cover up all the other colors completely. But don't worry, if your trees get a little too tall, you can make your mountains even taller. See, that's what I'm doing right here. And also while the green is still wet at the bottom where that line is, I'm just taking some light brown and doing back and forth strokes down into the ground. That's going to clean that line up and make it look like it has a shadow. There, that's looking great. Now get a fan brush. We're gonna do my favorite grass painting technique. Take some dark brown and some tan. You can use both together or alternate, but I'm just going to do upward strokes, very short upward strokes, and cover the entire ground. This is dry grass. It's gonna take you a while, so I'm gonna speed up the process, but I always say do upward strokes, never pull down because your grass will look upside down. And if it looks funny, it just usually means you don't have enough. So see, I'm going in and I'm filling in more of those bald spots there. Fill up the entire picture. I like to alternate between dark and light then to give it highlights and shading like that. And then I'm gonna take a dark brown, make it even darker with some black like I did with the green. And using a size five round brush, we're going to do a line all the way up through the sky. This is a tree trunk. I always say start thin and then you can make it thicker as needed. I make it a little thicker towards the bottom. Let's give him a friend. Now see how I have him leaning off to the left? Don't do your trees all perfectly straight up. They can be going all different directions. See, I'm gonna have this one really leaning over. He was going towards the sun or something. And then do some branches. You don't have to get super detailed, but see how I'm pulling along the trunk up and then out at an angle? You should see a type of V shape. It could be a wide V or a thin V, but just do a couple of them. Now grab an old credit card or a piece of plastic. This is my one that I use a lot. You could also use a palette knife, but this is a really cool trick. Take some tan and white and put it on the side. We're going to scratch in a curved motion to add highlights or bark texture to our trees. So watch this. I'm just gonna do a swooping motion from the left and that gives it a really cool texture. I love how fun and easy this is. So start from one side and do it in like a curved shape, like a smiley face almost. And that's gonna make it look round and look almost like birch bark or some type of bark. You can even use the edge to do the trunks too. Isn't that fun? I love that. And then grab an artist sponge. This is one with more of a large texture compared to the fine sea sponge. We're going to use the same colors as we did in the background, 
but I'm going to do pops of orange just by bouncing in some of that golden yellow. We're gonna bounce some of that in. I'm even going to take some dark brown and some tan. I didn't use the dark green for some reason. I wanted this tree to be completely changed. Also, don't be afraid to make it more dense, especially on the ends of where your branches are. That's going to make it look more complete. Now let's paint a country road. I'm gonna make a dot up and the right side where the trees are and one right underneath where that first tree is. Let's do another one over to the right. Get rid of that one, that was a mistake. And then I'm going to do a swooping line connecting that one on the top right down to each of those dots. See that perspective? Fill that in with the curve of the road and tan paint. I'm even gonna take some of the dark brown and while it's still wet, blend in some shading along the edges, some expression strokes in the middle. Very cool. And then I'm gonna define it a little bit more and let it dry. Now, like I said, everybody said they like to decorate with pumpkins, so let's paint some pumpkins. Take your round brush, you can use a detail brush, and make a teardrop with white paint. Then do a backward C off of that and a letter C on the other side. See how that makes a curve of a pumpkin? Do the same thing here, teardrop, backward C, fill it in, and then a letter C on the other side and fill it in. We're doing white first so that our orange will be nice and bright and even have them overlapping there. Once it's dry, then you can fill it in with the color you want your pumpkin to be. I'm using an orange called pumpkin orange, so that's perfect. But I will say craft paint is a little thinner than regular um, artist acrylic, so you may need to do two coats. See, that's what I'm doing here. I even added a pumpkin on the bottom right corner. You can do as many as you want, but make sure they're nice and dark. Now I'm taking a size zero detail brush and with some dark brown, I am outlining the curves of my pumpkin. Now this pumpkin orange is still really, really bright like cartoony orange. So I'm taking the brown and then blending it in with the orange to make it like a neutral brown color. And I'm also going to add a stem like that. You can design it however you want. When you're doing your shading, it's up to you how detailed you get with it. Like if your outline gets too brown, you could just blend it back in with orange, but have more of the darker shading at the bottom of the pumpkin. Think about that because you would be brighter on the top where the sun is hitting it and darker towards the bottom. So something to think about. Don't forget a stem there. And then I like to take some white and add some pops of highlights that helps everything stand out a little bit more. Totally optional if you don't like that look, but I think white is like the icing on the cake or the pumpkin. <laughs> and then take a dark brown again. And you thought I forgot about this pumpkin too over here, didn't ya? I'm gonna add some highlights there, so cute. And then I'm going to take some dark green and add some swirly lines coming out from the stems. You can design them however you want, but that's some vines, some little extra detail. It's up to you how much detail you do. I'm even adding some white highlights on those as well. Perfect. And if we truly were in a pumpkin patch, there would be pumpkins all over the place. So think about perspective. I'm doing white first, but these pumpkins are further away from me. So they're gonna be super teeny tiny. You don't have to do as much detail on these. Just give the impression of having pumpkins off in the distance. There, now taking your detail brush again. I know we have grass all over the place, but it kind of looks like we, we stuck uh, pumpkin stickers on there. There, there would be grass growing in front of it. So I'm taking some dark brown and doing upward strokes for longer grasses, especially going a little bit in front of the pumpkins or any bare spots you see. And then layer over top of the dark brown some light tan, just like we did with the fan brush, but you have more control to fill in and define any areas. But because you already did the fan brush texture, you don't really need to do it everywhere, just in little patches. Don't forget some that goes in front of this side of the road too, because you would see some growing up from the side. Perfect. Don't forget some in front of those pumpkins, maybe some behind these here. I'm liking it. The only thing I see is my broad got a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna brighten it up with a little bit of white and tan, add some more brown um, expression strokes, or they could be tire tracks, that's up to you. And there we go. There's a super easy pumpkin patch fall scene. Hope you had fun. Make it your own. I can't wait to see how it turns out. And I love how it matches my wine bottle scarecrow. That worked out great.